we fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of His mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the Lamb. We fall down, we lay our hands at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of His mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. The second thing is framing. But before I talk about framing, let me talk about the third step, the third phase. The third phase is believing or exercising faith or applying faith's force to bring to reality the dream, the vision, the blueprint. See, going from step one to step three, you'll face a lot of obstacles. You'll, you, you know, it, it, unless you have a vision, you cannot believe, it is impossible to believe an abstract thing, concept called healing or prosperity uh, without really personalizing the vision. If you look at the Bible as a religious book and you read it because you're a Christian and you're born as a Christian, you're supposed to read it from your granddaddy's days, then it's very difficult to, for you to believe in healing or prosperity or all of these things. But if you look at the Bible as God's word speaking to you, revealing his will, his idea of what a man is, his design for mankind, his design for your life, and you read it in that way, 
then now you are personalizing it the word is speaking to you the word is speaking to you and telling you that you need to be saved the word is speaking and telling to you that you need to be healed and you need to be well the word is speaking and telling you that you need to prosper you need to be successful that god's blessing will cause all of these things to come into your life god's favor will help you to achieve these things see that is why the vision happened as to happen first the wish, vision is created by the bible promises and when those promises are received in a personalized manner where you believe it's speaking to you and it's for you god god's design is like that for you you begin to see yourself in the light of those promises you begin to see yourself as the bible describes human destiny you begin to see your life and your family your work of your hand everything as god sees it you begin to see that design and be begin to see yourself in terms of that design and when you see that now you are looking at yourself maybe you are born poor but now you are getting a vision from the word of god saying that's not god's will that's not how i'm meant to be like yeah sin has come curse has come into this world so many situations brought this th- kind of thing upon my life i am in this way but god's will is for me to take it from here and arrive at that destiny god wants me to be like that i need to be like that i need to not look for handouts from anybody i need to not look at people to help me to do this and that for me you know i know i don't need to depend on man i need to not just be a dependent of somebody i need to be a giver myself i need to help others i need to live my life in that way because god has made me to rule and dominate god has made me to be fruitful to multiply to replenish to subdue and dominate god has made me to be a winner god has made me in his image and likeness i'm getting a vision of that now when you get a vision of that the fact that you're poor is already there in front of you that's what that's what that's what makes it difficult in faith life in the life of faith the fact is you are poor but the vision that is cast from the bible into your heart is for prosperity well being more than enough abundance that kind of vision is cast so between these two things there is a big gap and you are in that gap you are only seeing yourself without money without anything poor and suffering and so on that becomes a problem and that is why i shared with you last week from a wonderful verse you know remember that second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17 for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding weight of eternal glory when when does the affliction become a light affliction when does the affliction become a momentary affliction not a permanent one when does it become a passing one and not a permanent one while we look not at the things which are seen look at verse 4 18 second corinthians 4 verse 18 while we look not at the things which are seen what is the things which are seen the thing that is seen is that i am poor that is what i can see while we look not at the things that we, that are seen but at the things which are not seen what is the not seen thing it is my vision that is cast from the word of god into my heart the blueprint that god has given me the thing that has come into my heart as a vision for my future my destiny that god wants me to arrive at so how do you proceed from this point to that point I do not look at the things which are seen. I do not look at my lack and insufficiency and want and my present status and the way I am today. But I begin to look at the vision that God has given to me through his word. The design that I see that God has in mind for me. While we look not at the things which are seen. See, when I don't see the thing that is happening now in my life, 
and i begin to see god's design for me god's wish for me god's will for me this affliction that i have this poverty this affliction that i have or whatever it is sickness or whatever the affliction may be this affliction that i have right now becomes a light affliction one thing secondly it becomes a momentary affliction passing affliction it does not become light and passing to everybody it becomes light and passing affliction only to those who are not looking at the scene if you're going to look at what is seen and don't look at all at the vision that you don't have a vision at all from the word of god of what you need to be then your affliction even a light affliction will become a big burden even the affliction that is that will normally move away and pass on and leave you in a short while will permanently find a place <coughs> the affliction will say this is a good place to stay we are welcome here you know in this life very hospitable he believes like this he wants it like this he believes that only then we'll go to heaven he thought like that very convenient you know that affliction will stay permanently but while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for those people the light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory what a wonderful way it puts it so it's a life of faith life of faith is lived like this there is what god says a vision that is cast in my heart by god's word i begin to see myself in that way but the reality is different my want my lack so i choose not to look at my lack and want i begin to put my faith on what god says about my destiny and his will and wish for me and i walk in that way so that my present sufferings becomes very light and ultimately it becomes very momentary and passes away so that it will turn out to be a wonderful glorious thing in the end when I achieve what God wants for me in my life. So when you are looking at things that are not seen, your vision that God has given to you through your word, you are walking by faith. Now how do you know whether you are walking by faith or not? This is one question that people ask very often. How do I know that I am in faith? See a lot of people are not in faith. They, are, they have what is called mental ascent. Mental ascent is a much lower thing. Like a person is born a Christian, so he believes in the Bible, he believes in Jesus, his virgin birth, his death on the cross, his resurrection and all of those things as a doctrine that he holds on to. He believes it. But you notice that his believing those things has not made any difference in his life. He is going on living his life the same way. You know, sin has rule over him. He is not delivered from that. His life has not changed. He has not become a spiritual person by believing it. There is no necessary changes that are brought about. He continues as any, anybody. There is no real difference. But mentally, he agrees and accepts these things as truth. That is what we call mental assent. Giving assent mentally to these things. Mentally agreeing and accepting these things. That is not faith. Faith is not a mental assent. Faith is something of the heart. When you believe in the heart, you will see a real change. You will see change, definitely. Heart belief will cause a change in the life. If you truly believe. See, heart belief is a real belief. When you believe a certain way, you will turn out a certain way. Now, how do you know whether you are in faith or not? There are two verses that I'll give you that will quickly show you whether, in your faith, whether you are in faith or not. One is Philippians chapter 1 and verse 25. Philippians 1 verse 25. It says, And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. Paul is here, as you know, in the previous verses talking about whether to die or whether to live and go on doing ministry. He likes to go
go on to be with the Lord because who doesn't like to go to heaven? You know, everybody likes to go to heaven. But he realizes that if he goes, then there will be a vacuum here. He is needed much here. He needs to work and establish churches, teach the people and so on. So he says, if I'm here, I'll do some good for you. So I've decided to be here. Why he decides to be here? He says, for your progress, he says. And the joy of faith. See, when faith is there, there is accompanying joy. Joy is something that you see in the person that's got faith. A person who's walking by faith, may not have seen his circumstances change. The seen reality may still be his failure, his poverty, his sickness and all of that. But there is a joy that cannot be taken away from him. An indescribable joy that is deep down just springing up from his heart. Because of the hope and the vision and the blueprint that he has, that he's headed in that direction, that he's going to come there and arrive there at that destiny. So joy is something that comes with faith. If faith is there, joy will be there. Another thing is Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 3. For we who have believed do enter that rest. Let me stop right there. Another thing that accompanies faith is rest. So we have joy and we have rest. If you have faith, see these people have believed and have entered that rest. They enter there. If you believe, you'll enter a rest. If you'll believe, you'll be at peace. If you believe, there will be a peace that passeth all understanding. In spite of the needs and the problems and the difficulties you're facing, there will be peace. So there is joy when you believe. And when you believe there is rest, a spiritual rest, knowing that God is there, God is going to take care of all this, everything is going to pan out according to God's will. And that you're trusting in God, that you're keeping your eyes on God and His will. If both joy and rest are there, you're walking in faith. If there is no joy, if there is no rest, I tell you, my friend, then the real question of whether you have faith must be asked. Maybe faith is not there. That is why there is no joy. That is why there is no rest. Oftentimes, even people who habitually walk by faith, sometimes you'll find that you're losing your joy and you're losing your faith. That is a clear indication that you need to replenish your faith. That you are walking away from faith and you are looking at things now as they are instead of looking at God's word. So now we come to the thing that connects the first with the third. First is the hope, the vision. The third is the realization of that vision by believing. Right? What connects the two? Framing of your world with your words. So when joy and rest is missing, they're missing. What do you do? You realize that you don't have faith. And where does faith come from? Everybody knows this verse, but don't ever assume that you know everything that the verse is saying. I never make that mistake. I will always look at verses like I've never known it. Faith cometh by hearing. Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I need faith because joy is missing. I need faith because I know there is no rest. I cannot lay down and put myself to sleep. When you got faith, you can lay down and go to sleep. Remember that sleep prayer? See, we give you all these extras that you get nowhere. (laughs) What do you pray before you sleep? Say, Lord, I'm going to lay myself down and close my eyes to sleep because you are going to be awake while I'm sleeping and watch over me. Not only watch over me, but work overnight with all your staff in heaven, the angels. For my good, you're preparing everything for me for tomorrow. You're going to open doors for me. You're going to make things possible for me. You're going to influence people for me. You're going to speak in the hearts for me. You're going to give me opportunities and chances and open doors tomorrow. Make all things possible. Therefore, I cease to worry. I will not carry a burden as I sleep. I'm going to lay myself down, close my eyes, knowing that my Lord is watching over me all night and working for me to make everything wrong right for me by morning. Teach that to your children. 
First parents learn it. <laughs> Children pray the way parents pray. <laughs> so if you learn it and if you pray, they'll automatically learn. That's one way to learn. let them learn it. And when you pray it like that, I'll tell you, my friend, just pray it for a few days. You'll see how your life changes and how you sleep. You'll sleep good. <laughs> Your sleep will be good and your waking moments will be good also <coughs> because you have slept good. <laughs> you know, you won't be grumpy. So, faith cometh by hearing. So if you find yourself without joy, without rest, you know there's no faith. You need faith. Where does faith come from? Faith comes from the word of God, from hearing the word of God, not reading the word of God. From hearing the word of God, faith comes. Our God is good, our God is great, our God is true. And there is nothing in this world He cannot do. His mighty hands are made available to you. side of faith. Threatening clouds may hide your vision.
Say it all. 